Well, thanks for joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Doug Schutten, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Audion Technologies. I'm delighted to share this case study with you that exhibits the capabilities of Audion's Reveal for Caving solution to monitor deep, sublevel, and block cave mines. To set the stage, I'd like to briefly introduce the cornerstone imaging technology that we're using in this study, namely muon tomography. This wholly new geophysical technique uses the energy from supernova explosions in space to image deep beneath the Earth's surface with very high resolution. By measuring the attenuation of cosmic ray radiation as it penetrates the Earth, we can directly measure average density in each direction within a wide field of view from underground detector locations. A helpful analogy of this imaging technology is a familiar X-ray technology used by doctors to see inside the human body. By measuring the absorption of X-rays as they pass through the body, uh, denser bone structures are revealed by a reduction in X-ray flux. By creating X-ray images from multiple vantage points, a computed tomography or CT scan can be performed to create a 3D model of density within the human body. In the same way, we can use cosmic rays from space to see inside the Earth and map 3D density structure. In this case, density variations are arising from the evolution of a sublevel or a block cave mining operation. What this looks like in practice is to situate a proprietary detector platform within the extraction level and optionally in adjacent boreholes. Each detector location maps density within a wide field of view on a continuous basis. By combining the fields of view of a distributed array of detectors, we can map the cave back, any air gap that may exist, and density variability within the muck pile fully in 4D, that is in 3D and then also across time. It's important to, know, to note how much of a step forward this can be. The state of the art in mass mining operations currently is to probe the cave back with open holes or networked markers that only ever provide point source information on cave development. Subjective interpretation by experts is required to interpolate between the data and estimate the full 3D structure. And due to the paucity of data and the difficulty in modeling complex rock mechanics, these interpretations can be very wrong, leading to significant operational and safety risks. In contrast, by mapping the full cave back simultaneously and importantly, using Bayesian inference techniques to provide a quantified uncertainty measure, not only do we significantly enhance the level of understanding of the cave, we also provide a clear view into what residual unknowns there are, removing subjectivity and allowing for objective risk-based decision-making. Key benefits of this capability relate to safety and operational performance. In respect to safety, precision monitoring of the full cave allows miners to keep the size of the air gap within a safe range, staying away from severe air rush hazards. With respect to operational performance, the material that is caving today will reach a draw point at some point in the future. And so understanding how the cave is evolving dynamically allows interventions to maximize ore recovery and minimize dilution. As an example, this is a synthetic model of a realistic block cave as it evolves over five years. Based on an input block model uh, each month, simulated muon data is created and then used to estimate the cave in a wholly unconstrained or blind way. The resultant cave shape is shown here with its uncertainty at all locations, indicating that the expected accuracy of the reveal solution in this example at 1,000 meters depth would be about 10 meters on average and less than 5 meters across about 50% of the cave. Audion delivers a full stack solution. We build proprietary sensors, we deploy them, we collect the data, uh, analyze it, and then eventually deliver visualizations and decision support to our customers to make sense of that data. The muon detector platform is available in two form factors for borehole and in mine uh, panel detector form factors, respectively. What that looks like in an operating mine is shown here. We can hang the panel detector from the back of an underground drift, tucked away neatly out of the way of active mining operations. Similarly, we can also deploy the borehole detector in mine scenarios where space is tight by deploying it in the corners of underground drifts or cutties, again, tucked out of the way. In both cases, connected to the mine network to provide continuous data access and updates on the evolution of a block cave.
In order to demonstrate Idealon's reveal for caving solution, we work with the only block cave mine in Canada. New Gold operates the New Afton Gold Copper Mine in Kamloops, BC, about 300 kilometers north of Ideon's offices near Vancouver. We're very excited that New Gold was open to an imaging demonstration at their mine, and we're extremely thankful for the amazing support and innovative spirit they've demonstrated in facilitating this world's first cave imaging solution. The New Afton Block Cave is situated underground and adjacent to the historic Afton Open Pit Mine, which operated from 1977 until 1997 and includes an inactive open pit and other historic facilities. The porphyry style deposit of the new Afton mine is being extracted in phases and current mine life extends beyond 2030. The bulk of the deposit forms a tabular, nearly vertical southwest plunging zone of continuous mineralization measuring 1.4 kilometers long by approximately 100 meters wide, with a down plunge extent of over 1.5 kilometers. The deposit plunges towards the southwest where it remains open at depth. As mentioned, multiple block caves exist at the New Afton mine. Extraction levels are connected via underground drives down to 1,200 meters depth. Lift 1 was completed in 2022 with an extraction level at 600 meters depth and positioned underneath and to the southwest of the open pit. The lift one block cave consists of two panels which were initiated and extracted separately. Cave B3 is currently in operation. The extraction level is situated at approximately 760 meters depth to the southwest of lift one. Steady state production began in 2022 and at the time of the muon tomography demonstration, when we installed the cave had already broken through connecting with lift one. Cave C is the next block cave, which is currently in development and planned for imminent production in the second half of 2024. This cave extends production at New Afton down to 1,200 meters depth and is expected to operate until 2030 with an annual production of 90,000 ounces of gold and 70 million pounds of copper. Ideon worked with New Gold to install the world's first muon tomography based block cave monitoring solution in the operating B3 zone with a goal of demonstrating the power of this reveal for caving solution to delineate the full 3D extent of the cave, map had heterogeneity uh, within the cave zones, and also as a stretch goal, measure any observed temporal changes in both rock flow and cave extents. As I said, this cave had already broken through and was thought to be not expanding much further by the time the project began. We used nine imaging locations in the new Afton mine, leveraging various formats of muon detectors to suit each location. These consisted of four of our large gallery detectors in the deepest locations, multiple of our slim borehole detectors placed out of the way along the walls of underground drifts and chambers, and then also our newest detector form factor, the in-mine panel detector, which has recently been developed to maximize sensitivity to muon flux with a large detection area, but still be easily deployable and robust to be deployed in an active mine environment. The combined fields of view of the installed detectors encompasses about 800 million cubic meters of rock, which demonstrates uh, some of the additional benefits of this imaging solution, which are a broad scale mapping from underground infrastructure without requiring additional developments or boreholes, geological mapping throughout a large surrounding volume with upside exploration potential, and also geological or geotechnical mapping ahead of future adjacent panel developments. The data were collected autonomously into Audion's cloud platform and processed. 2D radiographs of anomalous density are generated from each detector location. Based on an assumed cave shape uh, for both lift one and cave B3, the expected signal significance of lower rock density or elevated muon flux shown in red can be predicted for this particular sensor location as shown here. In the absence of an anomalously low density structure from the block cave, we would expect the data radiograph to be sort of white noise consisting of low amplitude plus, which are red and minus blue fluctuations. When we look at the observed data, uh, we see quite good correspondence with the predicted data, albeit with some subtle variations. In particular, in this location, you can see some potential evidence of an overlaying tunnel signature from the workings immediately above the detector location. And the shape of the cave 
is largely in good conformance with the predicted shave cave, um, although with some subtle differences, which will be illustrated in the 3D reconstruction. We use the inversion software that we developed to build an unconstrained 3D density model throughout the subsurface. By wholly unconstrained, I mean to say that we only used the known location of the extraction levels and the LiDAR elevation model at the surface in the deriving the uh, density model throughout the space. No other prior geological model or auxiliary information was used. Looking at the lift B1 or lift 1 and cave B3 boundaries interpreted from Newgold's beacon marker, cable, and seismic data sets, we see overall very good correspondence. We also see evidence of interesting den density heterogeneity within the cave, which is thought to be reflective of different rates of rock flow through it, as well as a pillar between panels of lift one. We can then simulate muon data based on the recovered density model shown here, and then compare that to the predicted and the observed data. Note that the modeled muon data does not contain any statistical noise here. But what's important is that there's very good correspondence to the observed data. That is to say that the density inversion, the 3D model we've recovered, is capturing the important features in the data from the different detector locations. When we start to impose some simple constraints on the inversion, we see additional features coming to the fore more prominently. Here we've collected more data and also moved some detectors around in the extraction level. The only constraints added are a model of the overburden sequence and its associated density and the location of a filled pit in the northwest. The interpreted cave boundary aligns very well with the constrained recovered density model from Ideon's muon data. Additionally, that pillar feature that I mentioned earlier aligns very well with the transition between the two panels of lift one, as can be seen on the right. Pay attention to the color scale of the density model shown here, ranging from about 2.4 to 2.8 grams per cc. What was quite interesting to discover was a surprisingly compressed density range within the block cave, potentially indicating a smaller than expected swell factor in the broken material. This is definitely something we'll be investigating further. When we look at orthogonal sections of the same model, we again see quite good correspondence with the previously interpreted cave shape, albeit with some indication that the cave extends further out on the one side, which was not that surprising. Density variations observed in the surrounding geology are currently being investigated with respect to known alteration zones. It's worth noting that the survey configuration was set up to focus on the cave back of the B3 zone. Hence, some of the poorly resolved features at the extreme edges of the field of view won't have the same significance in the muon data. We've developed a stochastic inverse algorithm that determines the uncertainty of the recovered density model throughout the 3D space taking into account all the statistical variability in the observed data and the respective detector locations and geometry of the survey. This was the first demonstration of our reveal for caving solution. As we're nearing the end of the project, all of the success criteria have been met or exceeded. Even though this was set up to be a low effort early demonstration project, we are incredibly happy with how well the muon tomography system has been able to re resolve the full cave shape well beyond B3 and extending even into detailed mapping of the density variability in the broken rock throughout lift one and B3. Again, over 800 million cubic meters of earth from just nine detector locations with no additional infrastructure needed to be installed. Currently at B3, all of the other monitoring in instrumentation has been consumed and this provides currently the only way to know the cave extents. We know there are many fruitful avenues to enhance this even further, many of which we've already Im implemented and are, are happy to be um, presenting in, in a short while. Namely, integration with auxiliary data sets such as smart markers or beacons, uh, joint voxel model uh, and surface inversion algorithm where we simultaneously map heterogeneity within the rock domains, but also define precisely the 3D surfaces that separate broadly different domains, such as the broken rock from the air gap and, and the in situ rock. Once again, many thanks to the entire New Gold team, especially Corey Camp, and thank you very much uh, for your attention.